Hello again. A number of concepts from the novel 1984 have in recent years become common currency in political discourse in this country. Expressions such as thought crime, for instance. I want to look this morning at another term found in the book, which is that of double think. This means holding two opposite opinions at the same time and believing in them both while deliberately ignoring any contradictions. The thumbnail to this video shows a highly acclaimed theatrical production called Apollo 13, The Dark Side of the Moon. Although the events depicted took place only 53 years ago and some of those involved are still alive, in keeping with the times, one of the astronauts was played by a black man. Another of the astronauts, who is of course dead and cannot therefore answer back, is shown as a right-wing racist and there are debates between him and the black character about civil rights as they fly around the moon in the spaceship. All lies, of course, but that's in the nature of so much art these days, I'm afraid. The serious problem with casting black people and Asians in roles in historical dramas in Britain is that one is then obliged to accept two diametrically opposed perspectives and hold them to be both true simultaneously. On the one hand, we must of course all accept that British society is, and always has been, institutionally racist and that as far back as the days of Queen Elizabeth I and all the way through the 18th, 19th and 20th centuries, black people had a raw deal in this country and could never get on. This is held to be axiomatic. But when black people are inserted into television programmes and films set in Regency England, Victoria in London or Kent in the 1950s, we suddenly have to believe that nobody at all noticed the colour of anybody's skin and that black people and Asians passed unremarked in any stratum of English society. This is the opposite of the first view which I mentioned, to which all sensible, liberal and humane people now adhere. So it is that in the latest production of The Darling Buds of May on television, we have black people and Indians playing key roles in a village in Kent in the 1950s, and nobody ever mentions the colour of their skin. They are simply accepted without anybody apparently even noticing that they are black. This looks, to say the least of it, very odd. The BBC production of Great Expectations being screened later this year has a part of Jaggers, the successful lawyer, being played by a black man. Again, we are supposed to believe that there were well-to-do black barristers in Victorian London who experienced no racism or prejudice and appeared both as advocates at the Old Bailey and also handled the financial affairs of wealthy women in the provinces without the faintest sign that anybody even realised that they were black. We see a similar scenario in Bridgerton, of course. What this entails is, as I said, being obliged to hold two opposing views and reconcile them mentally while pretending to oneself that one is not doing so. Obviously, we must accept that Britain has always been a racist society, and the further back one goes, the more violent and intolerant is this racism. However, when watching historical films and television dramas, we must also believe that black people were simply accepted on their merits in the 18th and 19th centuries in Britain, and that they held professional roles in middle-class society, and nobody actually noticed that they were black that liberals and left-wing types who are the most enthusiastic about the idea of colour-blind casting are able to perform these contortions in their minds, I find extraordinary, if not especially admirable. That nobody wishes to draw attention to it, and you will never see this mentioned in newspapers or magazines or on television, I find absolutely bewildering. <laughs> 